Hello, my name is Max. I have Asperger's syndrome. This video is the sixth part of a series of videos where I address the various symptoms of AS and give vivid examples of these symptoms from my own life. Briefly, before we begin, in case you haven't watched the first video and are not inclined to, refer to the description box for my modus operandi. It will only take a few seconds to read and might provide you with worthwhile context for the rest of this video and the series. For this video, I'll be doing something a little bit different. Though this series is called The Truth About Asperger's Syndrome, I admit have given a lot of attention to the negative side of having it. I figure it is about time to give a more positive angle, and I think the best way to introduce this positivity is by discussing how talented people with autism can be. Research has shown that people with AS, on average, have higher IQs and a higher attention to detail. As I briefly mentioned in my video on the subject of narrow interests, this is a core reason why people with AS tend to be inordinately skilled regarding one or more fields of expertise. While these skills skills tend to fall in the categories of science and mathematics, attention to detail and pattern recognition can predict artistic talent as well. Why people with AS tend to have these abilities is currently unconfirmed, but there are some theories. Allow me to present one. In a study titled What Aspects of Autism Predispose to Talent, the authors argue that because people with AS do not function as well in social situations, we reorganize our brain function to cope. To put it simply, the mental effort that neurotypicals put toward social interaction is redirected towards talent development in the minds of neuroatypicals. This hypothesis potentially makes sense if you combine it with pre-existing research on childhood brain development. Psychological research has shown that, generally speaking, it is between the ages of two and four that children begin to learn how to socialize with other human beings. They learn the boundaries of what is considered acceptable social behavior, and if they're lucky, they also learn social skills that make them desirable in social situations. What is somewhat frightening, however, is the same research has shown that unless the child learns these skills before the age of four, it's borderline impossible for them to learn them afterwards. In the case of neuroatypicals, not all, but several, our fate is all but cemented because we are either hardwired to not understand basic social cues, or we are hardwired with odd behaviors that make us ripe for ostracization, leaving us out of this necessary socialization process. In response, our burgeoning brains cope with this isolation by redirecting mental energy that would normally be spent on socialization elsewhere. The study suggests that the average human being processes information in context for meaning, preserving gist, and gestalt form, whereas people with AS have a processing bias towards detail and featural information. In other words, it is the autistic's attention to detail that predicts talent. It can be argued that dedicating that brain power towards talent development has allowed people with AS to evolve faster than the average human being, but at the moment this remains more of a romantic notion as nothing is really for certain. Also, because our minds focus less on social acceptance and conformity, we are much more prone to cultivating individuality and, concordantly, originality. This is why, as I said in the last video, people with AS tend to set the standard in their fields of expertise, because originality, if utilized correctly, can lead to immeasurable prosperity. Sure, there is high risk associated with being purely individualistic and original because maybe nobody accepts what you have to offer the world, but sometimes they do accept you, and when they do, legends are created. People with AS either don't care about being a part of an in-group, or if they do, they just gave up trying to fit in a long time ago. As a way of creating a positive identity for themselves, they find ways to excel at something they enjoy. Some examples include Alan Turing, autistic, very socially awkward, but is often considered to be one of the progenitors of computers and artificial intelligence. Satoshi Tajiri, who some of you might know as the creator of Pokemon, might not know is autistic as well. These are just two examples of a countless number of people with AS setting standards in their fields. Granted, not all of us can be Bill Gates or Lewis Carroll, but nonetheless, there remain several people with AS who develop an aptitude in very specific fields. I know, because in my previous videos, I've received hundreds of comments from people saying that they have developed a very particular set of skills that make them highly sought after for very particular jobs. Here's an example from a commenter named Maurizio. There's few things I'll focus on, none of them precisely productive. However, thanks to my sister, I've found what I'm good at. 
speedy data processing. She got me a job where I had to count the people that passed in front of the shop while counting by type. Madams, ladies, men, and students, then quickly write it all down, then count more. Did that from 9 to 5 with only the lunch for a pause. And it was by far the best thing ever. To keep my brain in this state of high demand data input, I counted 4,000 people every day. While this is absolutely wonderful to hear and Maurizio's example should serve as motivation for all of us, he does point out an unfortunate reality. He continues with the following. Sadly, I have no clue where to get more jobs like that. The reality is that because people with AS tend to develop a measurable aptitude with one or two skills, our lack of basic social skills makes it very difficult to get most jobs. In my case, I lost a job opportunity because I didn't look somebody in the eye during the interview process. For more on that story, see the first video in this series titled Eye Contact. Nevertheless, I beg my fellow Aspergians to hold on to hope. There is a job out there that is tailored fit to your needs and your skills. It just takes a while to find it. Even if it's not a career at first, but just a job that pays the bills, it's out there. Hopefully, by providing some examples from my life, some of you might be encouraged to foster a particular skill or broaden your knowledge of something that is of particular interest to you. In my last video, I told a story about how I came to be interested in music at a young age, but I neglected to mention how this interest helped me survive a really awkward time of my life. And in fact, brought me moments of true happiness and fulfillment. Around the time I was 14 years old, I found myself practicing guitar three hours a day. I had become absolutely obsessed with it. I started to recognize a capacity within myself to excel where my peers could not. At the time, I didn't realize that my ability to play guitar was my go-to identifier in high school. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know how in high school there are various social cliques like the princesses, the athletes, the stoners, the smokers, and in some respect, that becomes your entire identity? Well, for me, I was the guy who always had a guitar and was always playing it. Because my social skills were non-existent, I used my guitar playing to invite other people's attention. People would ask me if I knew certain songs, and when I did, I played them. And when I didn't, I took to the computer and looked up sheet music and tablature so I could play it for them next time. And people really liked it. Hell, even my professors liked it. I can't tell you how many times before class started, I would be playing guitar at my desk and my professors would encourage it. I suppose that the unifying power of music encouraged my peers to momentarily forget their social prejudices. They didn't think it was weird that this guy was always playing the guitar and never really speaking beyond that. Moreover, my guitar skills were particularly helpful when it came to dealing with the opposite sex. See, all I had to do is sit still, keep my mouth shut, play some complicated licks, and I had girls coming to me asking for me to serenade them. Whether it was Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles, Hey There Delilah by the Plain White Tees, they loved it. It also helped that my lack of speaking made me somewhat mysterious, and I was also devastatingly handsome. No, scratch that. Still devastatingly handsome, but that's besides the point. For the last 10 years, I've played in several bands, played live twice in front of my school, on the streets, at two performing arts studios, and have produced live shows and recordings. And buying Engaging with the universal language of music, I was able to connect with people on a non-superficial level. Interestingly enough, even as I have been writing this script, I have rediscovered a love for music that I haven't felt for so long. For the last couple of years, I haven't really done much musically for several reasons, but now I think I should start taking it more seriously again. Anyways, sorry for that slight digression. Now, I know some of you might be protesting, but Max, I don't have musical skill like you. That's fine. You can create a positive identity for yourself just by cultivating your knowledge of music. If you like music, listen to more of it. Learn the ins and outs of what makes particular songs great, or particular bands great. Write about your knowledge. Do YouTube videos about it. And hey, if music isn't your thing, broaden your knowledge of movies or TV shows, um, computers, philosophy, science, construction, and put it on display somehow. And by display, I don't mean like an art piece. I mean that you should just let the world see your passion. That's what I did. If you have something to say, people will listen. Now, it will take time. Maybe one subject doesn't draw as much people's attention as another. Maybe you have to experiment with different methods of communication. Eventually, you will discover a pattern that works for you. If you're already obsessed with something, channel that energy into something productive. By putting out consistent work of even just decent quality, even you can create a positive identity for yourself. I am living proof. That is what I did in respect to this YouTube channel. I have found that my main talent, even more so than music, is being an effective communicator. In doing this series of videos on Asperger syndrome, I can't tell you how many times I have received comments from people saying that when I am describing my experiences, it's like I am describing theirs. Not just very specific instances in their lives, their entire lives. And in doing these videos, it is very humbling and satisfying to know that just by having that validation, I 
I might have saved somebody from the terrors of questioning their own personal worth, feeling alone, or fearing the future by opening up these lines of communication. But the most important thing I want all of you to know regarding this series is that I never imagined that I would receive the response I did. I'm a very small YouTuber. Most of my videos barely scrape 1,000 views, and when I put out the first video in the series, it was a cry out into the ether to see if anybody would listen. The way I see it, that first video was a sort of primal scream to see if I could find help, or if there was anybody else out there like me. And in doing so, people have been leaving the most heartfelt messages filled with gratitude just for me doing something as simple as talking about my experiences. In a leap of pure faith, I found a new effective way to cope with having AS, and that is by talking to you, hearing your experiences and giving advice where I can. The same thing can happen to you. It will just take time, lots of introspection, and a commitment to be true and honest with yourself. And like I just said, it won't be easy, but hopefully I've provided a forum for people to help one another, and hopefully I've been able to help by responding to your comments and messages. I know some of you already have questions and concerns about how to move forward, so I encourage you to leave your comments down below. I do read all of them, and respond most of the time. Before I conclude, I want to offer a resource that has helped me immensely, particularly when it comes to having AS and developing my skills. I recently did a video on my channel where I talk about coaches, and these are people who work with mental health sufferers, whether you have autism like me, ADHD, depression, etc. They will work with you either in person, over Skype, or over the phone to help you tackle challenges that might be overwhelming for you. I interviewed my former coach, a guy named John Tucker, who has helped me find things I enjoy doing, as well as advocate for me to my parents, to my school, and to my workplaces. Please look in the description box for a link to this interview and see if coaching might be right for you. I highly recommend that you at least check it out. Until next time, my fellow Aspergians, just remember, you deserve to be happy.